gonna ask, okay, I'm gonna ask the fucking chat. No, 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 no oh, the chat. Here we go. I'm asking the fucking chat. Fuck you. Okay, chat. Do you want me to do a fucking talk on Mulan? Right? Yes. yes no. That's it. No, that's I the fucking majority. I, Gary, yeah. I actually do want you to. I'm going to ask the people, should I do a fucking review of Mulan here on the channel? I had enough with people's bullshit. It was going on for quite a while. Where people have been ribbing, laughing... Poking, and most of all, get me so fucking pissed off. Because there are some people out there who I associate with seem to enjoy pissing me off on purpose because they don't have any fucking brains in their goddamn heads. But there are a few people who have properly got me on their side and correctly said the proper things. But in this instinct, um, I'm going to show you all some examples as to exactly what happened of what got me so fucking pissed off. So, for those out there who want to see my anger and frustration and the proof of why I get so mad at people, here's the examples. Number six, Mulan. Why is that not in the top five? Fuck you. No, that is my all time. That is my all time. Good for you. I don't give that two my, fucking that shit. Is, that is my number one. Number all one. Yeah, you can stick that number one actually, up actually. your fucking piss hole. I absolutely love Mulan. I oh, wonder gee, why. I fucking wonder why. I shit. I don't see. Put the cheese away. Cheesy moves. Seven, we're gonna get to, let's talk about uh, some Asians. Let's talk about Mulan at number seven. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> Number I'm six. just waiting. You know what's gonna happen? <laughs> you know what's happening? You know what's gonna happen to Gary? <laughs> Number six. Number six. Number six is the little mermaid. <laughs> 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 By one. You're telling me that you choose the fucking. Oh my god. Oh no, get we fall down. You're telling me you're just a goddamn fucking fish bitch over a fucking warrior, goddamn princess! Number six. <laughs> I see where this is going. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> The most authentic. The Rock a bye, baby. Oh, baby. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Gary, give a break. Don't you fucking dare. Don't you I dare. I can't stop it. I can't stop it. Stop. Fuck 
you. Just fuck you. Because you know what? Here I am right now. I'm going to talk to you all about why Mulan, at least in my mind, is not only my favorite Disney princess, but also my favorite Disney princess film. And no, it's not because of my biasness for the type of women that I love. It has nothing to do with any biasness. Maybe by 1%. But it has nothing to do with biasness at all. So I shall explain properly. After I watched this movie quite a few times because, oh, I just love it so dearly. And after a video that I watched of someone going into, into ins, explicit, proper details as to why Mulan is the best Disney princess film, which I give a lot of credit because that particular man said a lot of things that I agreed with. It's my turn now to talk about this movie. And without being biased whatsoever. So, Mulan 1998. Here's a little background, at least just a little scenario of what to expect of how this movie became to be. How this particular adaptation came about from all sorts of dozens of storybooks, uh, plays, particular feature films from the past all those years ago. But here is what Mulan is and who she is. This is a Chinese folklore, Hua Mulan. Now, within dynasty eras between the northern and southern districts of China, once her father was called up to fight and honor the Chinese army, Mulan decided to disguise herself as a male. Now, after how many weeks or even within months of training fighting against the enemy, she becomes the female warrior that fought with honor. She later revealed her, her true identity, her true gender of who she is in front of her colleagues and everyone that she fought with. Not only surprising, but showing exactly that a woman could can fight, a woman can have respect, can have honor, dignity, pride, all those things. Hell, even praise from the emperor, but turned it down because she wanted to go back to living a simple, normal life. Falling in love, getting herself a husband, I'm sure, having some kids being in good graces with her family, I'm sure probably some siblings, but I love folklore. It's not just in the Chinese folklore, but I also love that Japanese, Korean, all those. But between Chinese and Japanese folklore is something that I absolutely love reading because the stories between if it's within an army or a particular figure, if it's a male or female uh, warrior, samurai, ninja, or just something that's romantic, or even I'll go on the dark side of horror. I love folklore tales because it's just so fascinating how these stories came to be and become so well respected, especially with someone like Mulan. Now, within this particular folklore, there ends up being a lot of different sources. I'll give you an example. The Ballad of Mulan was a popular literature and visual storytelling mural. You also have Mulan Joins the Army, which was originally a stage play that later became and ended up its own film. There was one in 1928 and a version that came in 1939. I have not seen those, but if I do come across them, I will check them out and see what those movies are all about. But the one that everybody absolutely loves and knows is the 1998 Disney adaptation. And obviously, knowing me, that is the one that I love as well. Now, at, I will reiterate what the plot is once again. Now, after finding exactly uh, that her father has been selected to fight in the Chinese military, Mulan, who was, late, who was voiced by Ming Na Wen, decides to take her spot. Her friend Mushu, who, oh, he was such a fun, loving, adorable character, who was voiced by Eddie Murphy, joins along with her, being her sidekick and trusty companion, giving her voice, advice and pointers within what was, what's going on, how she can survive within the army itself. Now, she's not allowed to necessarily fight as a female because of the rules and guidelines of, you know, the obvious. But she disguises herself as a man. She ends up having a romantic interest with Li Shang, who was voiced by B.D. Wong. And, well, you know how the story goes from there. So, what are my thoughts about this movie besides me praising it? 
let's start off with the animation is absolutely beautiful. It's you know how Disney was. It developed and progressed later on within the technology and the creativity and the whole entire production of how they're able to assimilate this particular world in general and just how the animation is. It's also beautiful. I love it. Now the score is phenomenal. People are saying yes. I'll Make a Man Out of You is that top song that is featured in this movie. And it's obviously very popular and one of the best Disney songs out there. I am absolutely a fan of it myself. But the thing is, is that I don't think Jerry Goldsmith doesn't necessarily get enough credit for the arrangement sticking with the Chinese tradition and fitting to each scene of what goes on, whether it's something serious or something romantic or a little comedy value. It was just the whole entire, the fact that he was taking that... Chinese traditional sound, those in, the, those instruments turning into like its own modern setting, but sticking with those roots. I think the arrangement that he gave the score is is fantastic. I love listening to that type of music whenever I want to relax and calm down, and whenever I want to go back and listen to this particular score, I think it's fantastic. It calms me down whenever I want to listen to it. Hell. Not just pulling up uh, traditional Chinese music to help calm me down if I want to relax, but listening to the Mulan score does help quite a bit. So, the story. It's like I said, it pertains to the Chinese folklore. Now, it truly reflects on a female who can be a leader, take charge, fight with honor, dignity, pride, earn and gain respect sticking with the, the tradition of what where her roots come from, becoming a true warrior, protecting her family, friends, and village from any sort of harm. Just a story like that is it's fascinating and gives a lot of recognition to not only a key particular female character, but also exactly that a woman can do things. I love her connection with Mushu. It was just too adorable seeing those two just talk, interact, have that little comedy and everything. I mean, this is one of those movies that ma that puts a smile on your face. It really does. Now, as for the romance with Li Shang. <laughs> Moving on. So the thing is, is that since we all know Disney gives their own adaptations for whatever real life story that happened in the past and turning it into their own particular perspective, it showcases how Disney has a lot, ha had a lot of creativity of having all those princesses, one with seven dwarves, one going to a ball, one that's under the sea, fuck you, one that meets a beast, learning exactly who I, his identity really is. Also, you have one where she's cast under a spell and it's up to Prince Charming to get her out of that spell and fall in love. Destined from the start when they were kids into now. So There's been so many creative princess stories and the fact that we were able to now get a story where there's some action, there's love, there's glory, there's fucking heart. This was, when I saw this, this was a complete breath of fresh air when I, when I witnessed this movie. Not just going to a different, going to a different uh, country, but also a different time setting and a different story of something that is, a, that is fresh within the Disney princess realm. I love it. I absolutely love that. I would love to see more movies. I wish there was more movies like this within the Disney catalog. But then again, that's just my own uh, perspective. Hell, if they ever come up with a Japanese uh, Disney princess, I won't complain. You can, you can come up with all sorts of ideas for Disney princesses as long as they're different, as long as they're new, as long as they're creative, as long as we got a particular story while it has that traditional factor of the princess falling in love with the prince and all that other type of stuff. Okay, but just make it something fresh for the audience to watch and witness. Like I said, Mulan is one of those concepts. Overall, all I can say is, is that this movie was fantastic. I love the folklore. I love the premise. I love the story. I love the characters. 
I don't love the romance, but fuck you. Um, but Lee Shang, he's all right. But this movie is absolutely phenomenal. I have so much respect, literally, for just the entire premise. The score is incredible. The animation is beautiful. And uh, Mulan is a movie that I gave a 5 out of 5 to. And no, it's not just because of biasness. It's because the story itself pertains to folklore that I just uh, that I just love reading about. And it's something Disney that brought upon us that's different in investing. So folks, that's going to have to do with my review of Mulan. So with that being said, to all of you, if you start ribbing me about another fucking movie in the goddamn comments, <sighs> keep it! Relevant to this movie! I'm asking for your thoughts about Mulan, not about another fucking film. About Mulan, your thoughts only. So let me know down in the comments, please and thank you about this movie. Ciao for now!